Okay, so this video is the first video on a more or less complete course on metric spaces and topological spaces. And this first couple of videos we are going to do some, we are going to review some real analysis. So we need some basic language from real analysis and we are going to introduce a couple of quick concepts and some examples. A, the set of reals, the real numbers, has no upper bound or lower bound. Any element you get in the reals, you will always have some b in the reals to where b is greater than a, or you will always have a c in the reals where c is smaller than a. Okay, so the set of the real numbers has no upper bound or lower bound. Uh, what about uh, negative real numbers? Well, for all strictly negative real numbers, you have no lower bound, but um, you have a upper bound. For instance, zero is a upper bound. Zero is a upper bound of the negative uh, real numbers. Well, I, I said zero. Any any positive number as a upper bound for the negative reals. Um, and if we have an interval like this, okay, usually in some countries, one, one of the possible notation is this one. So open here and closed here. But in Anglo-Saxonic countries, the usual notation is this one. Okay, so this means the interval is open. So in the reals, we have um, zero is here till one. Okay, it will be this interval like this. Okay, so you might think, well, this one is open, this one is closed. So let me see which one is up if it has a upper or lower bound. Well, nothing to do with being closed or open, because this interval has a is bounded above and bound, bounded below. Okay, so this half open interval is bounded above and is bounded below. Now, if you have a let us say a set S. Okay, and this set S has an upper bound. Let us call it U, U for upper, right? If S has a upper bound, S will have infinitely many upper bounds because any X um, in the reals uh, that is X bigger than U will also be an upper bound for S, right? So, okay, better to get a, a proper definition. Okay, so we dive directly into a definition. Uh, given a non-empty subset S of R, so here you have the real numbers, and here we have a subset S, okay, which is bounded above. If S is bounded above, we call U, well, this, um, this is not a proper drawing, but it's okay for the moment. We call U a list upper bound for S if U is an upper bound for S. So you have for any element that is in S, u is bigger than a. 
okay so this is a upper bound for s okay and u will be the least upper bound for s if for any x um, any x that is bigger than a x so for any x that is an upper bound of s x is also bigger than u if this happens u is the least upper bound of s okay okay imagine for, for for instance on the real line that this this is your s set and let us call this one u so u is an upper bound for s no doubt about it and but this x here is also an upper bound okay because every element of s is smaller than x so this one x1 let's call it x1 x1 is also an upper bound for s and x2 is also an upper bound for s but the smaller one is this one so you see x uh, you pick any an arbitrary element here a x1 will always be greater than a x2 will be greater than a and u will be greater than a yes but x1 and x2 they are all greater than u okay so this u here is your list upper bound for s.